Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll uh, try to make my talk as uh, short as possible because we're all tired and my talk somehow the final talk of our conference. Uh, and, uh, but it, it is related to very important uh, subject, uh, the subject we all are working on actually finally because uh, uh, the major uh, goal of biological work is medicine. And I will talk about clinical trials of mitochondrially targeted antioxidant. Uh, and uh, uh, as you, I will generally skip this scheme of hypothetical program of aging, how, how could it work? I must just say that we uh, place mitochondrial ROS production, increase of this ROS production, as a, in the key position of this uh, program of aging. It can uh, pro promote decrease of cellularity of our tissue and organs, which is trait of senescence. Mm, but even s cells, even, even if they do not die because of ROS, they, do not, they work uh, um, not, not that good. So it, it causes uh, tissue damage and tissue dystrophy, which is also trait of uh, Senescence, but also connected to such an unpleasant thing as necrosis, which in, um, in turn causes inflammation, fibrosis, and we have very nice vicious cycle uh, here because inflammation is related to ROS production again. Uh, if we talk about inflammation, it is part of immune system, so we can uh, put here uh, immune pathology or even immune activation, which is also related with uh, certain stress conditions and, as, and aging as well. Uh, so in the middle of this complex uh, scheme with several vicious cycles, we see ROS production of mitochondria, which makes uh, this uh, point is a good, a good target for pharmaceutical intervention. Uh, and uh, uh, serious intervention into this uh, uh, target can be achieved by mitochondrially targeted drugs, mitochondrially targeted compounds. There are other attempts to use classical antioxidants, for example, but uh, we all know that they are not working that well in the organism. So we will focus on the mitochondrially targeted. And they, uh, uh, this type of compound can uh, consist of two areas, lipophilic uh, cations, mitochondrially targeted ions linked to antioxidants, uh, Skulachev ions, and mitochondrially targeted peptides, so-called SS peptides or Zeta Schiller peptides. And talking about clinical trials on, uh, well, uh, generally there are a couple of dozens, maybe two dozens of such kind of compounds known or synthesized, but only uh, three of them were tested in clinical trials. First of all, it's MitoQ, of course, made by Mike Murphy and Robin Smith. Uh, it's uh, it's mitochondrial targeted ubiquinone. Next, SKQ1, our compound, mitochondrial targeted plastoquinone, and one of uh, these uh, SS peptide called MTP131 or some strange commercial name. And here's the list of clinical trials uh, which were performed with these compounds. It all started more than 15 years ago with MitoQ, and the, uh, it was uh, properly organized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, phase two clinical studies on Parkinson's disease and hepatitis uh, uh, caused by HCV. Unfortunately, the, uh, the treatment had uh, no effect on Parkinson patients, and we have some explanations why. They were very, in very heavy condition. Uh, on hepatitis, the trial didn't meet a primary endpoint. For some unknown reason, they tried to reduce uh, a level of viral infection in, in, in the liver with the antioxidant, and they failed. But they observed some statistically significant anti-inflammatory and liver protective um, uh, effect of this compound. Unfortunately, at that point, after these results, the clinical development of, SK, of MitoQ was stopped. This company failed uh, to, uh, to attract more investments. And they, by some very strange uh, method, uh, uh, started manufacturing MitoQ in its reduced form uh, as a food supplement in New Zealand. Uh, 
and uh, so it is available through internet uh, and people st uh, started to buy it and also doctors started to buy it and they uh, um, performed several uh, initiative clinical doctor initiated clinical studies double blinded uh, in United States I, I wonder what FDA thinks of these studies because it's food supplement and very strange but they were performed uh, and uh, Unfortunately, no effect was uh, in the study of chronic kidney disease. However, they managed to show interesting effect in the, uh, on a very interesting aspect of aging. Uh, aging of vascular system, MITOQ managed to ameliorate uh, aortic stiffness in the patients. It's an interesting result. That's it about MITOQ. Uh, next portion of my, uh, the studies was performed by Stealth Biopharmaceutics Company with the MTP131 peptide. Uh, and uh, they launched uh, quite a number of uh, clinical trials. Uh, most of them are very small or on uh, some uh, mitochondrial disease, and we don't have uh, results yet. Uh, we, but we were waiting uh, very much uh, to the results of this phase three study on mitochondrial myopathy. Uh, and the uh, results were published uh, uh, just in December 2019. Unfortunately, no efficiency was shown in this study. Stocks of the company went down many times. Uh, and uh, so it was uh, a big confusion for all, all of us. But we're still waiting for uh, other indications and the company is carrying on these clinical trials. Uh, and other clinical trials of mitochondrial targeted antioxidants, they relate strictly to SKQ1. These are our clinical studies uh, performed on two forms, two pharmaceutical forms of SKQ. Uh, and uh, first one, eye drops uh, with SKQ uh, because of some discovery made by people present in this audience, and we thank them very much, Professor Kolosov from Novosibirsk, who discovered that uh, some eye diseases can be treated in animals with SKQ, and we, so we choose our first uh, pharmaceutical form as a eye drops. Uh, and I will, in the next 10 minutes, go a little bit more in, in more detail on our uh, clinical trials. This is SKQ. I, have, I can save some time. Um, it, it, it can be reduced and oxidized in, the, in mitochondria, which, in, which makes it rechargeable antioxidant, very nice one. Uh, it has very nice effect uh, in vitro on inflammation, as Boris Cherniak told us today. It also stimulates uh, regeneration in several systems. For example, uh, this work was done in Mount Sinai Hospital in the United States, and um, they showed that if you make a wound on monolayer uh, made by human corneal epithelial cells, this wound uh, healing can be very much uh, stimulated by addition of SKQ. Among uh, uh, these results, combined with the results of uh, uh, our laboratories and the uh, results of uh, Novosibirsk group, we finally made our first uh, pharmaceutical form, eye drops, so they, they called visimetin or visimetin, I even don't know how to pronounce it in English. Uh, it's some standard composition for uh, uh, eye drops containing uh, polymer base, preservative, saline, phosphate buffer and, buffer, and very small amount, 250 nanomolar solution of SKQ1. That's it. We have uh, several versions. Uh, we have 10 times stronger visimetin, uh, and 30 times stronger means 30 times higher concentration of SKQ inside. Our first clinical trial was done in Russia, in Moscow. Uh, it was open-labeled, uh, randomized uh, study, and we showed that visimetin works better than artificial tear on such a, uh, well, simple, but not... Uh, but quite unpleasant eye uh, disease as dry eye syndrome. R remember this uh, corneal epithelium cells uh, regeneration stimulation that we tried to use this uh, effect of SKQ with this disease. And uh, we observed several things. For example, um, percent of patients who reported no symptoms after three weeks of 
Our treatment was statistically higher in the group of vismitin comparing to very good artificial tear. They, these two solutions, they differ only by addition of SKQ1. It's another study. Uh, this time it was double-blind, placebo-controlled. And uh, in all these, our studies, placebo is actually not placebo. Uh, some companies, they produce this uh, solution as an artificial tear, as a quite effective drug against dry eye syndrome. And you see uh, uh, that uh, in this study, uh, at, uh, this artificial tear works very good. Uh, but to a certain level. Uh, after uh, four weeks of treatment, the effect stopped uh, in, uh, in placebo group, but continued. The effect was uh, uh, healing of uh, corneal damage. And uh, at this point, treatment was stopped, at, and in SKQ group, we see statistically, signi statistically significant reduction of uh, corneal damage uh, up to almost a month after the treatment. Uh, it's another study now uh, made in United State, uh, States uh, under FDA approval. It was double-blind placebo-controlled phase two study. Uh, and uh, we observed similar effect on uh, corneal and con uh, conjunctival um, da damage, uh, which was, uh, but in this study we used some interesting system somehow approved in by FDA, so we uh, allowed to use. Our partners, a uh, very experienced company and uh, contract research uh, organization in the United States called Aura, uh, they develop a system when they put a patient uh, with dry eye syndrome into the chamber with very dry air and the fan which is blowing this dry air into his or her eyes. And they provoked to keep their eyes open uh, because they're watching TV uh, uh, during about an hour in this chamber. It, pro uh, it provokes, fortunately, reversibly. That's why FDA approved this system. Provoke a little bit uh, of dry eye. Uh, and, in, and it helps to, well, somehow even the patients, even the symptoms from patient to patient. And uh, with this system, you can use much lower number of patients, so you risk much lower number of health uh, in your studies. Uh, it was used, and we ob obtained similar results uh, to what we did in Russia and Ukraine study. Uh, but one result was really interesting. I will come back to it uh, in, in a minute. Uh, it seemed that after this dry eye challenge, uh, eyes of the patients uh, who underwent SKQ treatment were uh, very much protected from this dry eye. Their, uh, their eyes uh, uh, reacted in opposite way to this dry eye treatment comparing to placebo control. So all these studies, they um, allowed us to uh, have Vizamitin approved in Russia. Uh, it is, uh, we set up manufacturing and all the sales and marketing and all these unscientific things, but they're necessary if you want to see your drug uh, in the drugstores and uh, deliver to patients. And I'm happy to uh, say that now we uh, produced and sold more than two million uh, vials of Vizamitin. And actually, at this point, I must declare some conflict of interest. At the same, I am a researcher who is working uh, with SKQ and eye drops, but at the same time, I am CEO of the company uh, which is producing these, these drops. But I will try to uh, stay as far from advertisement as, as possible. So uh, this result scientifically is very important because, uh, 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 because of we set up as it's prescribed by law, a pharmacovigilance system in our company. Uh, each bottle of Vizamitin has a telephone number uh, or other uh, addresses, so uh, patients and doctors, they can report uh, side effects uh, uh, if they observe uh, of uh, SKQ treatment of their eyes to us or directly to Ministry of Health. Uh, so in some way, it was kind of two million separate experiments. Uh, done. And the uh, side effects reports are very rare and they uh, mostly relate to allergic reaction to preservative present in our eye drops. So uh, the sa we are very much satisfied with the safety of this drug. Uh, 
another nice thing, uh, when you have your drug approved, doctors can prescribe them off-label and uh, to use on other indications. Uh, and one of the uh, obvious indications for mitochondrial antioxidant is mitochondrial disease. And the most uh, common of them, of these disease, is Leber syndrome, Leber hereditary optic neuropathy. Uh, and um, uh, one of the Moscow uh, eye institutes performed uh, such an initiative study. It was single cohort, so no control. Uh, patients with uh, diagnosed certain uh, mitochondrial mutations, they were prescribed vizimitin, and uh, they observed increase in their uh, visual acuity. Don't be confused by this uh, scale. It's Logmar scale, and in the scale, the lower number means better vision. So the vision was statistically significantly uh, increased, uh, and you see p-value is several tens of millions. Uh, 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 and uh, 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 so it, it's quite uh, uh, significant. And we managed to compare it to literature uh, data. There is a paper uh, done on the patients with the same mutation. In, uh, in this paper, uh, patients were treated with idabinone, uh, but and only in 18% of patients uh, uh, vision, uh, vision equity was improved, uh, which is normal for this uh, uh, mitochondrial disease. In our patients, this number is uh, about 70%. In other paper, where uh, two mu mutations uh, uh, were studied, at, and again, uh, uh, SKQ produced much better results because it's mitochondrially targeted, uh, contrary to idominone. Uh, we're very much satisfied with these results, and we're now preparing two things, paper uh, about them, and maybe clinical trials. Uh, now, uh, maybe we could manage to organize them in the United States uh, in double-blind, placebo-controlled way, but it costs some money. Uh, and final, uh, uh, the biggest clinical trial completed so far on uh, visimitin on SKQ eye drops. It's called VISTA-1. It was phase three clinical trial, double blind, placebo controlled, uh, made on 250 Americans uh, in the United States. Uh, two versions of visimitin was uh, trialed, normal one and 10 times more concentrated. Uh, two weeks, uh, eight weeks of treatment followed by this dry eye challenge. Uh, and it uh, produced quite nice results. Uh, uh, for, um, I have a pile of 30 uh, slides on the results of this study. Of course, we measured everything. Uh, but the most, uh, the nicest one uh, uh, is uh, for, uh, s improvement in uh, con conjunctiva. So the SKQ uh, promoted uh, wound healing in, in uh, in patients conjunctiva and cornea. Uh, it also reduced ocular discomfort, and all these are st statistically, especially in uh, a high dose. It, and again, both are statistically significant results. Uh, and uh, here is again, we saw this very strange result uh, after dry eye challenge. Uh, uh, on this uh, picture, uh, you see the measurement of uh, tear film breakup time. Uh, our uh, tear, it makes a film on the eye, and if you put a light a certain way and take a, a timer, you can measure how, how many minutes this tear stays on the eye. But then it breaks, in, and you fix uh, this time. It's a typical uh, parameter for dry eye uh, studies. Uh, and uh, not surprisingly, dry eye challenge decreased this tear uh, breakup time in the, pa in the pa in placebo or vehicle patients. But somehow, this eight weeks of treatment with SKQ increased uh, the tear breakup time in, in the patient. So somehow, they, their eyes uh, seem to be trained uh, against this dry eye challenge. It, and again, it's a very uh, statistically significant effect. And again, it's double-blind placebo uh, control. So nobody knew, uh, no, uh, not patients, neither uh, uh, doctors, where was visimitin, where was placebo. Uh, and a final clinical trial we made 
on the second uh, uh, formulation of SKQ. It's oral formulation. It's some solution uh, for uh, taking in orally, uh, which contains uh, 10,000 times more concentrated SKQ1. It's called plastomethin. Uh, and we com last year we completed phase two, uh, phase one, unfortunately phase one, uh, clinical trial uh, here in Moscow. Uh, and uh, 35 young men uh, uh, took several do uh, different dosages of uh, this, of SKQ actually. And the major goal was to prove safety and none of them reported any adverse effect, which is very nice. Uh, but we also had uh, some important results from this trial. We took uh, blood samples from these patients and managed to detect SKQ1 in the blood uh, uh, after oral administration. So uh, in half an hour, 35 minutes, it appears in the, uh, in the blood. Uh, well, uh, I would vote for higher bioavailability of the drug, so we had some problems with this. But still, it opens uh, way for further development. And so we're now uh, improving, actually, this pharmaceutical form and preparing for phase two uh, clinical trial. So, uh, finally, uh, I, I, uh, I would like to draw the whole picture uh, for you of our project. We have a plan, uh, and this plan takes about 30 years. But if anybody tells you that uh, he or she can uh, defeat aging in less time, uh, send him away. Uh, it's not possible. Uh, aging, fortunately for us people, and unfortunately for us researchers, humans age very slowly. Uh, and it's a bad news. Good news that 15, uh, we started 15 years before. Uh, and uh, our task set by Vladimir Petrovich was to check clinically if SKQ uh, works on humans. It can be done only in clinical trials, uh, but you cannot trial uh, an anti-aging drug because no such indication in the list of FDA or Ministry of Health. You can trial drugs only against certain diseases. But it's not the problem. We try to pretend that we are not addressing aging at all, and all this age, uh, uh, aging pro uh, program and other things, they are just pure science. Uh, uh, but if your drug, if your compound uh, slows down aging, affects aging, then it should be helpful against age-related diseases. So uh, we, uh, for Ministry of Health, uh, we pretend that we are just treating certain diseases and we're looking for indications. And again, thanks to our colleagues, we found this eye, these eyes, eye diseases as the first indication. Uh, and uh, quite fast for pharmaceutical industry in seven uh, years, uh, we managed to uh, uh, complete first series of clinical trials and launch this first drug for local administration, eye drops. Uh, and it is very important because of two things. Uh, first of all, it's, uh, and the most important, uh, it's kind of proof of concept that SKQ1 works in human. Okay, locally, only on eye, maybe on, only on cornea and conjunctive, but still, it works in, uh, in humans, in clinical trials, and we can go further. And second important result, uh, we, try, we uh, managed to set up manufacturing and sales of this compound, uh, of this drug, uh, and it gives us funding to move further. Uh, and now, as you see, we already started clinical trials of systemic drug, and we hope to have it approved in a couple of years. Uh, not as an anti-aging anti drug, but as a drug against certain age-related disease. Then the hypothesis behind states that, uh, states, uh, that uh, there will be several indications for this drug because uh, aging uh, is a reason for, well, many diseases. So we, we must be able to broaden, uh, uh, to extend the list of indications uh, for this pharmaceutical. And then we hope uh, that uh, this pharmaceutical will be accepted by doctors and will be prescribed to many patients. Uh, and in five, seven, or 10 years, 
we will be collecting big data on the usage of this drug on, the pa on different patients. And then we hope that our mathematicians will stay with us uh, and we'll, uh, they will somehow, uh, uh, in a very sophisticated way, analyze this data uh, to get the final answer. Does uh, aging, was aging slowed down uh, in these patients or not? And to me, it is the only way to check Professor Skulachev hypothesis uh, in humans, but that's, what, that's our goal. Uh, and if he is right, and if we manage to uh, prove this hypothesis, then we will get a drug which, well, maybe not stops aging uh, completely, not re rejuvenates uh, uh, humans, but s at least slows down aging. And it would be some step towards human without aging, to towards Homo sapiens liberatus. Thank you very much. Maxim, thank you for your talk. Are there, there is a comment, I know that. And I just give the microphone. Thank you. I couldn't st stop myself from making just a short comment because this is the pharmaceutically oriented session. Uh, as I talk in my, here in this meeting, we are working with complex one. It's an arrow which Vladimir Petrovich uh, showed in his presentation. It's so-called reverse electron transfer. And complex one is one of significant contributors to the tissue production of ROS. Uh, you know, very popular drug now, which is metformin, which is the standard treatment anti-diabetic. It's widely distributed and everybody is taking, many people are taking this metformin as, as a medical treatment from diabetes. It's happened that biguanides and including uh, metformin are inhibitor of complex one. And you know what metformin in our experiments with complex one is doing? It promotes ROS production by mitochondria. And actually the relatively low concentration of metformin induce about twice simulation of ROS production during the reverse electron transfer. That's my comment. And I can add some uh, that metformin is the only drug which is now in trials against aging. They're trying to set up this uh, clinical trial because there are a lot of data that it prolongs life of mice. Uh, and after what you said, Maybe it was uh, due to some, uh, it's called mitohormesis. Uh, so maybe it, yes, and, and this promote, promotes uh, activation of antioxidant systems, which is healthy. But, well, <laughs> it's complex story. Metaptosis, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it induces metaptosis, autophagy, something like that. Uh, further questions? If there are no questions, I just close the session. And I thank every, everyone for coming here, and I thank the speakers, uh, and particularly Vladimir Petrovich. Thank you. Thank you for coming.
Ну вот у меня в машине, в любом случае. А как лучше там или его отдать Лиле Адольфовне? Подарочек у меня в машине, но его не надо разбивать. А у нас машина, но в багажник положен. Ну, у меня сейчас, я, наверное, туда на Улову Пальму приеду, вот. потому что я Ольгу обещал отвезти с деревьями. Так что я приеду. Ну, вы довольны? Да, вот хорошо. Максим, когда вы да, у нас там небольшая команда, мы сейчас в Москве занимаемся. Вот у нас проект Health называется. Можно вам пожать руку за вашу работу, очень интересно. Вот, мне тоже интересно. Очень много работы у меня вызывается. Ваши приветствуются, мы очень смотрим. Украинские люди. Вас там тоже интересно, хотя я слышал и критику, и критику. Спасибо.